Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I'm going to take, talk to you today about landmarks from God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, um, just different things he does in your lives, people, places. Um, some, one of the things he's been dealing with me about lately is scriptures. Um, gives me a lot of dreams, too, and visions. But you know, I'm going to dive into the scripture that he gave me, a couple of them, and just kind of just briefly touch on them. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's in Isaiah 58, and he highlighted 58 and 10, but I'm going to go ahead and read 9 and 10 and 11. Then ye shall call, and the Lord will answer. Ye shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the finger pointing, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking wicked wickedness. If you extend your, your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light will shine in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. And it goes on to talk about you'll be a, you know, a watering, like a watering well, just some really awesome stuff. So I get these scriptures highlighted, and I just kind of dive into them and the scriptures around them and just kind of put them all into context. Um, this one, you know, hit me a little bit, was good, because my wife and I have, I've got a broken heart of the experience and just some things that happened in my life and transpired in my life and my wife too. So that's a ministry that the Lord has given us. So we, he opened a door at the downtown street Dallas shelter. So every Sunday night for a year and a half now we've been ministering. So it was just, you know, kind of handed to us just through a chain of events. Um, miraculous, and I'll tell a story one day, but anyhow, that's kind of a landmark too. But he, he, he just, there's things he's doing in our lives, and they're, and, they're, and they're personal. He's got landmarks in y'all's lives. Maybe healing, maybe deliverance of a child from drugs, uh, you know, meeting an acquaintance that you haven't seen in 25, 30 years, just all kinds of different things, and not, not coincidences. There's things that mark our lives that God does specifically for us, and that's why I call them landmarks. So we can look back on that, increases our faith, helps us find direction, just all kinds of cool things about it. Um, one time I was in the midst of a fiery trial, life and death tri trial, about two years ago. Talked to God, broken hearted, long story, but I was like, what do I do, God? He's like, I always go to my word. So fast forward it a couple years later, in the midst of a fiery trial with one of my loved ones in the family, and it was a I'm not air the dirty laundry, it was, a, it was a huge mess. My wife's like, you need to go talk to him, you need to do this, do that, do this, do that. Flesh is saying kind of the same thing. I didn't know what to do. So my wife leaves and goes somewhere, so I go in the house and start praying. Well, I'm mad at the devil, of course, for stirring up this crap because it was a huge mess. Kind of a little mad at God. Why did you let this happen? You know, where's my power and authority in that? It just didn't seem like it was there. So I'm kind of complaining and griping and just not even really praying, just kind of been trying to pray. Finally, I get a breakthrough, and I finally get to the prayer piece of it, submit my heart, surrender, throw up both my hands, and yell out, Jesus, what would you do? God, I didn't know. I was lost, directionless, needed his guidance. It was a huge mess that I couldn't, that I couldn't in the flesh, do anything about spoke to me and he said I always go to my word and then he said James 317 I don't even know what it meant you know my memory is not greatest so I had to go look it up I'm not like a lot of preachers I can quote scriptures and remember them all and know exactly where their pages are and stuff I had no idea what James 317 said look it up the wisdom from above peaceable gentle loving I had to show him God's love and grace you read on farther down it says that we were once sinners, and God had grace and mercy on us, and we needed to show it to others. Well, when I portrayed that in this situation, within two weeks, it completely turned around. It's been two years. It's been awesome and great. But had I gone in the flesh, I don't know what direction it would have took. 
So anyhow, that's kind of some of the landmarks God's been dealing with me about, and uh, you know, in the Scripture. And then I'm gonna just real briefly um, tell you some other landmarks He's been giving me. He keeps I got written down like about twelve different cities and even countries now. I've been having dreams about countries, far, far away countries. One was Uruguay. So it's like, but I'm, I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but I will a little bit. But he. Sitting in my prayer room two years ago, one tells me to go to this little town south of Dallas. It's about 60 miles south of Dallas. I'm like, there's 300 people in there. It's just this little podunk town. I drove by there all the time when I visited my folks. They, they used to live just, just outside of uh, San Austin. And uh, so I knew where it was. Told my wife after a couple weeks. God told me to go down there. I'm like, I don't know why. You know, we're just supposed to go. He told me a long time ago, you tell us to get in our car and just go, or on planes and just go. Use what you got. So that's another message that I got on there. So please watch that one. But so I'm like, okay, God. So we go after about three months. Well, one of the people that the Lord highlighted we finally prayed for, we prayed for him for about three or four hours, was in the midst of a huge fiery trial. Not just your normal can't pay my light bill trial. Very, very, very deep trial. Let it tell it or hear it. Um, the Lord opened the door and let us write to him. We ministered to him. It's too, too long of a story to tell. Boom, there it was. Exactly like the Lord said ministered to him and then we, the, you know then he told me to go to another city told me to go to the post office and the library and pray for certain people and I did and boom they were in the midst of a fiery trial just a horrific trial actually at the library he told me something that I didn't didn't even tell my wife he was like asking for a book on witchcraft I'm like you, that's not God I did too many drugs as a kid you know that what the heck? It's my imagination. What? Where, where's that coming from? So I didn't even tell my wife because I was embarrassed. Well, worked out. Told the person working there at the library. And you know what? They went into their story. They were born again Christian. Studied and just started studying their genealogy for the past couple weeks. Found out that their grandmother was a was a, a witch deep in Louisiana voodooism crap. Her granddad, just a mess. Witchcraft and satanic stuff. She wanted to break that generational curse. My wife ministered to her for 45 minutes, and the lady just wept and bawled in the public library. So now he's telling me, told me, he said, Canyon, I'll keep this to 10 minutes. He said, go to Canyon Creek, Illinois. I'm like, I wrote all these cities down. He's giving me people and places and so I in cities and so I Google it. I got like twelve of them written down. So I Google it. He told me this last November. Um so I Google it. No Canyon Creek. So I'm like, God, you told me Canyon Creek, Illinois. Well, why you know, I got kids that live in beautiful part of San Diego. I'd like to visit them again. Why well, couldn't he tell me Hawaii, uh, you know, Denver or some Someplace cool, you know, mountainous, you know, New Mexico, someplace really cool to go to. No, middle of nowhere, Canyon Creek, Illinois, you know, but I couldn't find it. So I didn't even know if it was really the middle of nowhere, so I'm going to keep this to 10 minutes, I promise, or try to. Um, 20 minutes go by. I looked it up all different kinds of ways, cities, counties, any way I could think of trying to Google it to change it around, and 20 minutes went by. All of a sudden, an ad for Zillow pops up, you know, and I hate pop-ups. And it pops up. There's a house on Canyon Creek Road in Normal, Illinois. And the Lord says, that's it. I want you to go to Normal, Illinois. He said, I want you to take three days to drive there, spend the day there, and three days to drive back. I'm like, so I look it up. There is a Normal, Illinois. You know, there's only 40 cities in Illinois. So what are the chances and odds of that? No, it's a landmark. So... Why do I have to drive? Pack, arduous, you know, why can't we fly? But we're gonna drive. So we're gonna we were gonna go in November and then some deaths in the family happened. My wife had to have oral surgery that said it was gonna be healed in two months. It's been seven months. It's just 
one thing after another. So delay after delay after delay. So spoke to me again. He said, I want to go over the 4th of July weekend. I'm like, give me traffic and got to drive. We're going to spend seven days in the car and just, are you sure, God? My wife's like, can't we just go someplace close like Dallas and we got a lot of people at our church and there's people all over the place that we run into at Walmart or just people that need prayer or, you know, interjection of the word all over close. My wife's like, can't, can't we go someplace close? Like, well, that's what the Lord's telling me to do. So get in our car and go. So I'm like, okay, so use what you got. That's kind of where we're at. That's where the church needs to be at. But so that's what we're going to do. We're going to get in our car and go. Well, about a week ago, I'm mainly preparing for it. I got a message, God's image of you, how Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and God, I'll live in you. And it's scriptural. I'll send you a copy. All you have to do is email me. Uh, there's 15, 20 scriptures, you know, it's a great message. God told me to print those out. So I'm going to print out like 100 copies and bring them with me. I made a copy. I got thir ordered 35 copies of the book about the visions that the Lord inspired me to write. I left out the interpretations because it's not me. It's, it's not even the book. It's just the content. It's awesome. It's just a gift that the Lord's given me. And y'all got them too. I could send you a free copy. Just email me. Um, so getting all the stuff prepared. I'm going to go to the store and get Bibles. I'm going to get 35, bought 35 or 40 Bibles. I'm just mentally preparing. And all of a sudden, the word idol gets highlighted. And my, you know, I'm like, idol? But it wasn't I-D-O-L. It was I-D-L-E. I'm like, idol? You know, kind of like idle your car or idly or doing nothing. Or just, so I'm like, well, Lord, what are you trying to show me? I'm, you know, I'm thinking about the trip. I'm thinking about praying and mentally preparing and just, you know, this is going to be awesome. So, what are you trying to show me, God? Idol. Are we supposed to go to Idol, Oklahoma? Because we're going through Oklahoma. Are we supposed to go to Idol, Missouri? We're going through Missouri. On the way back, we're going to come down through Arkansas because we're going a different different route. So, I'm like, Idol, Idol, Illinois? What do you, you know? So, I'm asking the Lord for directions on it. Idol, Idol, Idol. He said, no, I want you to go to Idlewood, Illinois. Idlewood, Illinois? that even a city? Like I said, there's 30 or 40 cities in Illinois. What are the odds and chances of that? Idlewood, Illinois. I already told me normal. Like, I don't want to go all over Illinois. And so I, so I go, I'm going to go Google it. I'm walking in the house and the Lord says, and I want you to go to the nursing home there. I'm like, okay. Go to Idlewood, Illinois. Is it even a city? Go to the nursing home. Okay, God, you know, I'm just learning to be obedient. Okay, God. So it's kind of specific and directions. Then I get this vision. And in this vision, me and my wife are driving up to this nursing home. And it's beautiful outside. The landscaping is gorgeous. Just pristine and manicured and well kept. There's all these flower gardens all over the place. Beautiful. Yellow, red, all kinds of just open flowers, it's gorgeous. The flowers were just beautiful, kept coming to my mind. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, how beautiful is the glory of my people. So I come inside, I Google it. There is an Idlewood, Illinois. It's about two hours south of normal when when we go up to normal, it'll be on it. Um, it's gonna be a little bit out of our way. I'm gonna have to come down a different highway, which is gonna take us to Arkansas, back to Texas instead of Oklahoma and Missouri. But it is a town. I looked it up. They got five nursing homes. So it's like, okay. So now we're going to normal. Now we're going to Idlewood. It's just I'm getting some direction, but not all. I don't know. But we're gonna minister to gas station clerks home, home motel clerks restaurant people i don't know i'm just gonna get in my car and go this is the other piece i want to say real quick i'll say it within 30 seconds so we're going on the fourth of july and we're going to be gone on the eighth seventh and the eighth that was highlighted the lord highlighted those days those are very specific july seven 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 and july seven seven eight seven eight 2008. So, tell me, use what you got. 
my computer's broke, mouse doesn't work, battery doesn't work, I need to get a new one. I'm like, okay, God, so I'm still just still on YouTube and slow. I just, I just, we just haven't got around to getting one. I'm not going to get a real expensive one, but I just haven't gotten around to getting one. So use what you got. So then he tells me to go to 2 Kings. And in 2 Kings, it's a story about Elijah, not Elijah, Elijah. And he's at Jericho, and one of the people from the city comes out and tells him, hey, this water is you know, horrible. We can't even use it. It's death. Elijah tells a servant, go get me a new bowl. Put salt in it, pours it in the water, Jericho, heals it. It's potable water to this day. And the Lord spoke to me again. He said, he used what he got, what he had. And then there's just all down throughout the Bible. It's like, okay, God, you know, so I'm just going to use what I got. So we're going to go. So I'll tell you more about the story. Um, I need to cut this off because I know most people don't watch really long videos. Hopefully you watch this one. But anyhow, I'll tell you all about our trip to normal Illinois on the 4th of July and seven days in the car with my wife. You know, that part ought to be real fun. But no, it'll, it'll probably be good. You know, we're going to get a chance to just share a lot of stuff that we haven't been able to because we're both busy. And I, You know, I don't know what God's going to send us. We're going to Normal, Illinois over the 4th of July. And then we're going to go to Idlewood to the nursing home. So there we go. So really, how we love you. God bless you. Um, share this with somebody. Look at my other videos. So email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. I'll send you a copy of the free book. I'm not going to send you a bunch of junk. Ask you for an offering. Nothing. No, nothing. Just a book. I'll destroy your email after I'm done. That's all you'll get. Maybe a nice note from me or something, but that's it. So we love you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful, awesome day. Um, we'll see you next week. And then after we come back from Illinois, I'll tell you all about the story. Or as much as I can without, you know, embarrassing people. So anyhow, love you. Use what you got. God bless you. Bye-bye.